designers, we're at the bottom of the food chain. We are hostages to typographers, to graphic designers, art directors, everyone up the ladder. How do you make a font? I always start with the same sequence of letters. Always do the lowercase before the capitals. I generally start with the lowercase h, followed by o, followed by p. Reason being, h is a straight-sided letter, more or less. It has an ascending stroke and also an x-height stroke. O is round, of course. P is sort of half of one and half of the other, and it has a descending stroke. So I've got a lot of the metrics in just those three letters. It's like sort of DNA. Um, I can look at those together, how they relate. Very basic things. Does it have serifs or is it sans serif? Uh, what are the, you know, what's the thick thin ratio? All those things can be, I don't say they can be finalized, but they can be studied just with those three basic letters. If you've got an H, you've got a lot of information about M and N and U. If you've got a P, you've got B, D, P, Q, and so on. So you can extrapolate from one form and build more from that. After H, O, P, I'd probably do an oblique letter like V, because that's another condition, um, and so on. You know, you, 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 you tend to work a lot on a small subset of the alphabet, maybe half a dozen letters. And it's only when you're fairly confident about them, their forms and their spacing, that you do start to build it out. A lot of people think that you start with the most interesting letters. You know, if you're learning about typography, you learn that, uh, I don't know, that Baskerville G has a gap in the bottom loop, you know, so it's easy to identify Baskerville. Or somebody's Q has a nice curly tail or something like that. Those are the last letters you do. They're capricious. They don't tell you anything about other letters. So you start with the letters that tell you the most about the other letters. As soon as possible, I like to print a text because reading, which is obviously what it's for, is very important stage. I, I tell students that the most important period in the development of a new typeface occurs between when you first think it's finished and when it's actually finished. Because you can see a proof and you can say, Looks pretty good, I can read it and so on. But at the same time, if you're honest with yourself, you kind of say, you know, I'm not quite sure that this is right. You know, what happens if I change this or I change that? No, it makes it worse. So you know, change this, see what happens and so on. So you go through a, a period that requires a lot of patience and perseverance where you are really sort of testing yourself. For me, it, it's all dependent on what it was supposed to do, and does it do it? And, you know, type designers, we're at the bottom of the food chain. We're hostages to typographers, to graphic designers, art directors, everyone up the ladder. And we can't police that. Where my own work is concerned, I've come to realize that, I mean, it's very nice when you see one of your faces used well. You know, it's gratifying. But it's also very interesting to see it misused. When a typeface is forced into a situation that it doesn't like, sometimes you learn things about it. Mm -hmm.